church at the Grove. Christ Church at the Grove. It is so good to see those of you that are here. Amen. Hopefully those that are watching. Um, folks, a, a blessed Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Amen. Come tomorrow to all of us. Uh, folks, fairness and equity. Equality. Amen. Amen. Neither Jew nor Gentile, neither uh, bond nor free, neither male nor female. Amen. It is um, something that we as Christians 
amen, should be uh, keen on always. Amen. God bless our nation as uh, we keep working towards being better. Folks, you can help yes. by living your life that way. Yes. Amen. Loving people well. Amen. 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 Um, I want to uh, acknowledge, amen, we're happy that the Swain family is all well. They finally get to celebrate their Thanksgiving family dinner <laughs> up with their parents. Uh, uh, so that's where the Swains are today. God bless them and hope they have a wonderful time. Folks, I don't know, but uh, I, you know, I'm noticing the, the, the impact um, of, uh, of COVID very noticeably in the number of people that I know personally who have uh, encountered it. And uh, it's hard because it's so many places you might encounter it. All righty. And um, uh, we want to keep Nathaniel and his family, Sangster, in prayer. Uh, as uh, uh, Natty has tested positive. And um, we want to pray for his wonderful kids, uh, Ayana, uh, her job at the hospital. Okay. And... Uh, <clears throat> Folks, in the meantime, though, uh, we keep forging forward. Amen. Uh, as we were singing that, that uh, little chorus, I couldn't help but think, do you know who wrote that chorus? Any idea who wrote that chorus? Well, actually, it, it, part of it is Job. That, that chorus is based on the experience of Job. How many know who Job is? Amen. If you would have started doing your Bible reading, <laughs> you would have already read the book of Job and been reminded of that man's um, biblical story of mostly hardship and of a lot of questioning. Folks, in the midst of hardship, we do ask questions. We acknowledge that we don't get things, that things are confusing to us, that things are not to our liking. And, um, but early on, as the catastrophes were, you know, falling upon Job, he makes the famous statement that the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. That we receive the good things from the Lord should we not receive the bad things? And he said, but blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. You guys, and I know that uh, as we're sitting here, that all of us uh, with any amount of experience in Christ, uh, we've been there. Maybe not to the extreme that Job has been there. But uh, uh, in life, amen, there are the things that we call good. And there are the things that we call not good. <laughs> but as believers in Christ Jesus, either way, we say, but blessed be the name of our God. Amen. 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 At your spiritual best, right. you will say that yes, even in the midst of the hard times. Amen. Yep. So folks, even as a nation, as a world, as we keep coping and it complicates everything, uh, all of us have our individual lives that there may be something in your life individually that's bigger than COVID anyway. Right? That's the way it is. But folks, we're going to pray and we're going to pray that God will have his way with us today. We're going to pray that we keep being flexible and adjustable uh, as things are uh, sometimes just beyond our control. Okay, and we're going to pray for Nathaniel and his family. Amen. Jesus, in your name, dear God, so thankful, Lord, to be in your house today. Lord, even in the extreme cold outside this building, dear God, we sit here in comfort. 
Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, we thank you, dear God, that the heating system is working fairly well in our uh, uh, old section of the building, Lord, and that um, Kimballsville United Methodist Church, Lord, was able to hold their service and that comfortably in the sanctuary upstairs. Lord, thank you for uh, uh, continuing to sustain us, Lord, through what we call good times and, Lord, through what we call bad times. Lord, sometimes in the long run, we even get those backwards. So, Savior, help us now, Lord, as we have brought ourselves, our bodies physically here. Lord, help us now to focus upon you. Lord, believing that you knew who would be here, Lord, and you know what we need. Savior, we lift up Nathaniel and his family. Uh, Lord, even as we have lifted up others, and we'll continue to lift one another up in prayer. Uh, Lord, I pray, dear God, my heart's desire for a speedy and uncomplicated recovery. Uh, dear God, and just a continual praise. Lord, may Nathaniel and his family just have a continual praise for you. Even as the Lord you give, Lord, even as you take away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Dear God, help us, Lord, here today to worship you, to glorify you. Lord, to expand your kingdom. Give us ears to hear. Lord, uh, we speak against Satan and his distractions. Lord, renew in me a right spirit. Dear God, create in me a pure heart. Let that be our prayer today. As we worship you, as we hear from you. Dear God, as we obey, in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen.
other name. No other name. Hallelujah. Come on, worship with us. Sing. Clap. Do a little dance. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Savior. Whoops. If everyone would look at your announcement sheet, just want to point out a couple things real quick. Um, amen. This week is our fast week. Okay? <laughs> so here it is, folks. Amen. Some of you were thinking on cutting back on eating anyway. Just haven't quite pulled the trigger on it. Folks, whether it's food, for many it's social media, television, um, Boy, I'm not sure you, you, this, the particulars are between you and God. But I can tell you this, that all of us need to bring ourselves under, with King James terminology, greater subjection. <laughs> Amen. Doesn't sound real appealing, but it is really important. Folks, namely, we need to control ourselves as God helps us. If we're going to live, live more pleasing to him. If we want to go to that deeper place that we were singing about. If you want to go deeper in God. Folks, we have to deal with ourselves. And um, so this week, uh, together, uh, we will uh, be fasting and uh, amen, I'm always excited about what God will do for me and speak to me uh, during this time. So I pray that again, that you, that you will do the same with you and your family. Um, you guys notice that our annual business meeting, because some of our leaders have been missing, uh, we're not quite ready to present to the congregation, though we will be in another week or two, okay? So in all likelihood, it'll be the, probably the first week of February, we will have a specific date next week for you, okay? Um, for those of you who need your contribution reports, those are available. So if you give to the church regularly and, and you have identified yourself, whether you give through a check or you use our envelopes, um, but folks, for tax purposes, for some of you, that you need that. So that's now available. Please see Sister Ruth. She'll have that for you, okay? And um, uh, today is the last week that we are collecting, and there's a box right outside the double doorways to your right, Home Depot box. Nice and big. It's hard to miss. Uh, if you brought any of these articles... If you meant to and still haven't, you let James or Mary Lou know. <laughs> I'm sure they'll still accept it, okay? But folks, I want to say thank you to, to, to you and to all of us as a congregation because we filled up, I don't know, about four or five of those boxes. Amen. Amen, Amen. to share uh, with those who may not have as much uh, as... Uh, we join with uh, church in the vineyard, excuse me, uh, the barn at the vineyard, right down the road. And uh, please keep uh, those who will be doing the feeding and distributing in prayer that God would cover. And more important, that God would touch lives, that they would realize that it is God who is ministering to them. And that they, they might respond to God. Amen. Okay. Um, yeah, that's the details there. Um, you guys, I'm going to pray. Whatever needs you might have, you should express them to God. You guys, I've been confronted this week reminded I know it happens all the time but sometimes it's more pointed in my life um, um, serious health needs very serious health needs folks every day someone leaves this world okay and um, 
the most important thing of all then comes to the forefront, and that is what we talked about last week, God's great work in salvation. Hopefully that you're a part of, that you, that you have by faith and identification connected to. Because at that point in life, that's the only thing that really matters. Okay? And, uh, amen, God knows who I have in mind. Uh, um, and maybe you have someone in that scenario. Uh, uh, folks, marriages. You know, uh, two imperfect people trying to participate in God's perfect design. Marriage. Not easy. A amen. Um, uh, you, if, if you're a married person, you ought to be praying that you stay married. Amen. But uh, uh, folks, uh, for relational issues, maybe at the workplace, for financial difficulties that can be very overbearing. Um, so you guys, there's plenty to pray about all the time. Amen. That we would hear what God has to say to us today because he is calling all of us to a deeper place and I want to talk about that, okay, uh, here in just a bit. But that you would hear because there's a deeper place in God for you and for me still, right? And I, and I want it. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus, in your name, then. Uh, Lord, we close our eyes even, Lord, that we might see you better. Lord, that we might be able to set aside, Lord, the distractions and the things that uh, would turn our attention, Lord, away from you. Lord, acknowledging, dear God, that today we need you desperately and, and people that we know of, dear God, need you desperately. Lord, I pray, dear God, for those that are um, ill in their bodies, Lord, some of them, uh, to the point of needing uh, hospice. And, uh, Lord, that's daily. Uh, but, Lord, you know who I'm talking about in particular in my life. And, uh, Lord, I ask that you would help him and uh, minister to him right now, uh, Lord. And I pray, dear God, that all is well with his soul, Lord, as he faces potential eternity. Uh, Lord, again, uh, Lord, for those that are ill with a less severe kind of uh, uh, illnesses, and yet, uh, Lord, we never know, dear God, how severe something might become. Lord, we pray for those loved ones, and uh, Lord, that we're aware of, God, that need a physical touch in their bodies. Uh, Lord, for those who are in relational difficulties, God, and just every day is an emotional roller coaster. Lord, especially in regards to marriage, uh, Lord, I know that uh, Satan oftentimes attacks spiritually, dear God, through family. So, Lord, I just pray right now, God, and again, you know the names and you know the particulars. Amen, Lord, may you undergird, may you strengthen, Lord, may you heal, Lord, even beyond what uh, some of us can imagine or think, Lord, I know that you can heal, you can restore. Amen, Lord, uh, uh, relationally. Dear God, I pray, Lord, for the issue of unforgiveness. Uh, Lord, so odd that we would hold grudges, oh God, regarding things and people of the past. Lord, it just doesn't ever benefit us or others. So, Lord, I pray, dear God, against that sin of unforgiveness. Uh, Lord, help us always, Lord, to, to be careful, to be mindful in our lives. Uh, Lord, how we are treating the past. Lord, help us to learn from it. Uh, Lord, help us not to stay stuck in it. Uh, Lord, for work situations... Uh, Lord, for financial difficulties, uh, Lord, just a myriad of problems, uh, Lord, that face us as a part of a contaminated atmosphere, Lord. We, li we live now, uh, Lord, where Satan is the prince and the power of the air, and it is so evident, 
Uh, dear God, may we keep our eyes upon you. May we stay encouraged. Holy Spirit, lift us up. Strengthen uh, the, the, the weak need and the feeble arms. Hallelujah, Lord. Uh, help us, dear God, to be above and not beneath. Lord, the head and not the tail. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. In Jesus' name. Uh, folks, our, our youth is going to stay here. Our youth group will stay here today. Um, and, uh, but children's ministry and nursery will be dismissed at this time. So God bless those folks that are a part of that ministry. And those of you that are staying here with, with Pastor Ben, amen. I'm going to ask you to turn to the book of John, though we're not going to put those scriptures up yet. Okay, the book of John, St. John, chapter 3. And uh, folks, let me remind you that I am doing a four-part series. As the start of the new year, and uh, at the very first Sunday of this year, I told you that we were entering into kind of a, a, a themed year. What's the theme of our year? Involved in God's great work. God bless those of you who can read the bulletin. <laughs> or maybe wrote that down. But folks, it's going to be on the top of the heading of your bulletin from here through the end of the year. Involved in a great work in 2022. And I took my scripture text from Nehemiah, and I can't reiterate it, but you can see it online. Uh, but the fact that he was... He, he was involved in the rebuilding of the uh, wall around Jerusalem after uh, the exile and that certain men attempted to distract him, to deter him. And that Nehemiah responded back, he said, tell them that I am involved in a great work. And why should this work stop while I go down to you? And that was such a great response, you guys, because they were looking to hurt him. They were probably looking to kill him where, the, where they were asking for a meeting. And uh, 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 in, in Nehemiah chapter 6 and verse 4, there's a verse, and the verse simply says this, that four times... They sent him that message. Come down to the plain of Ono. Come down to the valley, I think, of Ono. And, and meet with us. And he says, and four times I gave them the same reply. Four times I told them, I'm involved in a great work. I cannot leave this great work. I will not be distracted. I will not be deterred. I will not be delayed. Folks, I like that type of focus and commitment. And uh, I've taken this idea of four because it correlates to Christ Church at the Grove and our vision, our commitment series, amen, even to the simple question of what is it that you guys are about at Christ Church at the Grove? And uh, what are the four things that we're about? Christ, Christ's likeness, Christ's body, and Christ abroad. You guys, it, it all starts with Christ. Hence, Christ's church at the Grove. And in our commitment series, we, we have a little diagram that has a, a baseball diamond, which happens to have four bases or four basics. And um, 
and we move people around that baseball diamond with the idea that we must be planted in Christ, that we must be growing in Christ's likeness, that we should be connected to Christ's body, that we might spread Christ abroad. Christ, Christ's likeness, Christ's body, Christ abroad. I would love it if you would learn that. You would honor me tremendously. Or at the very least, have it written somewhere. Title page of your Bible will do. <laughs> So last week, and I'm, you know, last week we covered involved in God's great work in 2022, salvation. Because being planted into Christ is the issue of salvation. Amen. A personal encounter. You and God through Christ Jesus, changing your eternity. Changing your life. As stark as darkness from light. As different as death and life. Amen. And, and folks, let me just clarify again. It's an issue of the heart. It's a faith transaction. Between you and God Almighty. It is the day or the season that you hear God say your name. Your name. And you realize it's time for you to respond yea or nay to him. Amen. I'm glad I have had that experience in my life. And I know that God's not willing that any would perish. He's still calling people by name. It's a question of, are you listening enough? Amen. And then identifying, you guys. Identifying, receiving, believing, accepting. I mean, there's a bunch of different words I can use, but the bottom line is you have surrendered. Hallelujah. It's the best thing you're ever going to do with your life is to give it up to him, your maker. Amen. So we, we talked about that last week. So I'm on the second leg. I'm on uh, involved in God's great work in 2022. Discipleship. Discipleship. That even as Nehemiah realized with each time that they sent him the message, hey, give it up. Come down here. No, I'm in a great work. Next day, give it up. Nope, involved in a great work. Folks, there is more to our experience with God than the issue of salvation. Though <laughs> you're not in the race until you're saved. That's where it starts. Let me point you to John 3, where Jesus has a great discussion early on in his ministry. I mean, so early on that there's no way the man could have gotten it. A man, it says in verse 1, a Pharisee, there was a man, or there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. And he came to Jesus at night. And he said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you're doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. 
okay? Folks, that terminology comes from this portion of Scripture very early in the ministry of Jesus with a discussion at nighttime with a single individual. But around our world, you talk about anyone being born again, and most people are going to think, oh, you're some kind of Christian. Okay? That's probably going to be their first thought. Um, uh, The born-again experience has become synonymous with Christianity, though some other people, you get, you know, born again in some other way, I guess, but when Jesus first said this to a person, listen to their response. How can someone be born when they're old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb and be born. I mean, that's what it sounded like to him to hear Jesus say, Nicodemus, you're interested in the kingdom of God? You need to be born again. (laughs) Wait till I tell mama. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus answered, "Very very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they're born of water and the spirit. You guys, most uh, 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 commentaries will, will, will indicate that the idea of being born of water is your natural birth. The fact that you're inside a uterus, you know, inside mama, and it's filled with water. And at your birth, there's going to be water. So that, that, that is just a reference to natural birth. The one Nicodemus was familiar with. But what Jesus is talking about, which he refers to as being born again, is not going back into mama's womb and going back into a water experience. It's a spiritual experience. You have to be born of water and of the spirit. He says flesh, with the water you know, analogy and birth analogy, flesh gives birth to flesh. But the spirit gives birth to the spirit. Folks, and that is how we understand the born again experience. Amen. How many of you have experience the personal born again experience well hallelujah amen thank god for that that is the issue of being planted in christ you can talk about it in those terms of a new life an old life ending a new life beginning folks someone pointed out and it stuck with me strongly, that a rebirth experience requires a reparenting experience. Doesn't that make sense? Folks, if you were to enter, uh, you know, uh, if you were to be adopted, I, I knew this where you had the one family and then they did things certain ways. But there's another family now that you're a part of. Spiritually speaking, we have been adopted of God. And he has breathed into us a newness of life, uh, another life through the Spirit. Distinct from how you came the first time. Folks, the rebirth experience, in other words, salvation. Salvation is the rebirth experience. Requires a reparenting experience, and that's called discipleship. And and I've heard people um, in, in my past who, you know, were coming to Christ. And the first thing you need to deal with, 
as you come to Christ, is Christ himself. Are you going to believe in him? Are you going to surrender to him? Are you going to identify with him? And it is the paramount issue at that point in time. Everything else is secondary to that primary experience in Christ. I didn't say that it wasn't important or as important, some of these other things in your Christian experience. I, I'm simply noting the, the order. Folks, I've had people who have come to me and, and uh, uh, right away they, they see the good works. You know, the, 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 you know, the James and Mary Lou, you know, going to feed the hungry and take coats to the poor. And, and you know, uh, um, and, and, and they want to jump into that. And I'm willing to kind of let them jump into that just for the sake of letting them hang around. But I know that the real, the primary first issue is what about Jesus Christ in your life? Amen. Have you heard him call you by name and how have you responded? Amen. Because that's the issue of salvation. But folks, moving on from that, because I remember one or two people after they were, you know, expressed their faith in Christ and even to the point of baptism. The next question was like, hey, what, what now? That was their question. Hey, what now? Folks, you know what that is paramount to? That's, that, that's like a baby, if a baby could talk. Being born today at, 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 at you know, Chester County Hospital. <laughs> and, and, and uh, uh, you know, as soon as they're born, they come out and they, and they look around and they say, hmm, now what? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we look at the little fella. We got news for you. You just started. I mean, there's so much more, but I don't want to blow your little baby mind yet. So let's go a step at a time with this. Amen? Folks, there's a whole lot more to life than simply being born. But hey, if you're not born, there is no life. Folks, I don't want to, but spiritually speaking, if you haven't dealt with Christ and being founded and planted in Christ by your faith and identification, everything else is something um, that could actually become detrimental to you. The rebirth experience requires a reparenting. And I just want to talk a couple minutes here about that reparenting or the idea of discipleship. Folks, in salvation, you, are in the, you become an identified believer in Jesus Christ. That is your born-again experience. That is, hey, hallelujah, you've gotten started. Uh, but I, I, got, I got news for you. The, the, the Heavenly Father, oh my, he sees a lot more in store for you. You might not see it yet. But he's got plans. Romans 8.29 says this. He says, for those God foreknew, not that he forced, but he foreknew, he also predestined them. He has a plan for them. For those that he foreknew, he also predestined that they should be conformed to the image of his son. Amen. That they should be shapen. That they should have a resemblance. That they should have a Christ-likeness. So everyone that God, in his infinite knowledge, knows is coming to him, he's got a plan for it. And that plan is that you become like Jesus. That he, talking about Jesus, might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Hallelujah! Folks, that makes Christ, in, in this terminology, our older brother. And he's the one who got it perfectly right. And the Heavenly Father is pleased with him. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hey, how about the rest of you join in? 
and follow him and be conformed to his likeness. Folks, that's God's plan for us. Uh, 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 1 Corinthians 15, verse 49 states it this way, just as we have borne the image of the earthly man, and that was probably a reference to Adam and Eve, that, those first natural parents of ours. And you know what? You and I bear resemblance to them. Amen, we probably kind of look like them in our two eyes and one nose and two ears kind of a thing. In our physicality, but boy, we also bear an image in a lot of their, you know, earthly ways. And this is why we're going to fast to try to curb some of our appetites. Because Adam and Eve, you know, they were, they were, they were natural. And we've inherited that. Okay, but just as we have borne the image of the earthly man, so shall we bear the image of the heavenly man. Folks, this is God's intent. This is God's way of saying what he said in Romans. Hey, Christ's likeness. Christ's likeness. I know you look like Adam. I want you to look now like Christ. Amen. Um, that's God's continued great work in you. If we identify salvation as part of God's great work, then what comes after that? except what we call discipleship. His continued great work in you. Amen. Ephesians 4, verse 14 and 15, tells us God's design that we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves, blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people and their deceitful scheming and by circumstances and by the news and by the, uh, your neighbor's opinions and uh, da, 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 all the things that want to sway us, that we not be like infants and these things keep just blowing us around, but rather instead speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. Folks, that's a call to Christ-likeness. It is saying that in your infancy, you are in him, but now grow up. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, time to grow up. Amen. <laughs> Be nice about it. <laughs> Don't get into particulars right now. <laughs> But you know what I know is true of you and I know is true of me today is I need to grow up some more. Uh, 2 Peter 3.18 puts it in the form of a command. Grow, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's a command, you guys. You know what most parents desire for their children, especially their infant children? Is that they grow up. Folks, that's the transformation aspect of our experience in God. God has great plans for us. Number one, he wants to save us. But number two is he wants to change us. In our salvation, the way he views us has changed. You go from being a child of darkness to being a child of light. You go from being a child destined for death to one destined to life. How many of you are thankful for the love of God? We sang about it. For while we were yet sinners, he loved us. Okay, but you know what? Someone complete this. God loves you the way you are. And I'm thankful for that. All right, but what's the rest of the statement? Thank you, Connie. But he loves you too much to leave you that way. You might want to write that down. God loves you the way you are. That's how you came to be accepted in the beloved. Because while you were still a sinner, God loved you enough to find a way to save you. And if you'll believe in that, you are a believer and now you are rescued. But there is more to it 
Come the next day. God has other plans for you now that you are a child of God. And that is discipleship. The daily process of becoming more and more like him. That's the transformation that God has in mind. Jesus, lead the way. Now, I got a lot of other brothers and sisters. They're going to have to keep their eye on you. Amen. Amen. So let me just, uh, three quick facts here about this transformation, uh, this maturity process. Let me just call it maturity. You know, it's time to grow up. What's that mean? Time to mature. Amen. I hope no one here has a problem with maturing. Okay? Fact number one, it's not automatic. It's not automatic. This transformation is not automatic. Sometimes I could wish it would be. I was disappointed way back in the day when I first gave my life to Christ and I meant it. And no sooner did I do that than I went back home and blurted out one of my favorite phrases, which was not very God-honoring. And I thought, oh my goodness, I thought I was changed. I was. I now felt convicted. <laughs> Before I said it, it didn't matter. Now, as a child, at least I felt conviction. And it was time to change. And that's God's plan, so it's not automatic. Somebody said, we must all grow old. How many of you know that's the truth? Right. Everybody's aging. Okay? Uh, and and uh, at the same rate, one day at a time. One day at a time. We must all grow old, but we must not all grow up. Amen. Some of the saddest things are people who are well advanced in years, but they're still very childlike in aspects of their lives. Yeah. And... Uh, uh -huh. So, folks, uh, it's not automatic. Number two, it's a process that takes time. It's a process that takes time, and it's individually distinctive. If you've got more than one child, you understand that. Same parents, same DNA, pretty much the same upbringing. But boy, you got two different kids. <laughs> you got one that, you know, that, that uh, you know, maybe was, uh, you know, uh, artistic. One that's more, more, more athletic. You got one that's uh, uh, talkative. You got one that's more quiet. You got, you know, I mean, the, you guys, I'm thankful that God is willing to deal with me individually. Amen. He knows how I'm made because he made me. And he knows how I operate best and how I don't operate best. And I'm so thankful that he's willing to deal with me that way. So, folks, um, uh, this idea of growing up may look different in your life than it does in my life. But you know what doesn't change is the fact that the transformation he desires. He has called us to grow up. So it's a process that takes time. It's individually distinctive. Number three is it takes discipline. Amen. It's, ab it's about living supernaturally even while you are still natural. That is what the Christian walk is. It is the idea that we acknowledge because Christ is in me. I am now supernatural. But I am still encased in the natural, and hence, something got to change. <laughs> something got to give. Folks, and that giving is where um, it takes discipline. In other words, effort. Um, somebody said, no shortcuts. That's the heart of discipleship. I recognize you as my master. I am going to discipline myself to walk in your ways. Hence, I am your disciple. You know when you said, Jesus, be my savior? 
you probably also said, Jesus be Lord. When you said, Jesus be Lord, you put him in the master's seat and you put yourself in the servant or slave position. And if that's true and he says, then do this. If it's a true Lord servant relationship, you'll say, yes, sir. Yes, God. Amen. Luke 9, 23, Jesus didn't sugarcoat it for his disciples back then. Then he said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple. How many of you want to be a disciple of Christ? Amen. It's hard for him to be Lord if you're not a disciple. It's impossible. So listen, must deny themselves. Again, the practice of even fasting. Everything that is to your spiritual benefit, there's a part of you in the natural that resists. That's true of your pastor too. Okay? Um, it, it, it involves denying ourselves and taking up their cross. And I've, I've said this for years, folks. You know, the, the, you don't have to carry a symbolic cross like that. Like some people sometimes do around Easter, different part of the world. You've got a cross every day. When your will, what you want, crosses his will, what he wants, you've got the cross. And all you, but you know what you have to do if you're a disciple? Carry it. Carry it to where he wants to go with you. And you might even call it a burden. And sometimes we do. <laughs> you might say it's a hardship. And sometimes it, it is. And you might call it a trial. And you might call it a test. And you, but you know what? If that's what he's calling you to, call, to carry, and you want to be his disciple, then you have to deny yourself, take up that cross. Everyone say daily. daily. All right, folks, there's the challenge. Okay, there's the challenge. But Lord, I'm going to do it, but only on a good day, Lord. <laughs> only when I'm on top of my spiritual game. Then I'm going to know, folks, it's daily. It's my part. In my partnership with God. That disciple stuff. That cross bearing daily stuff. That, that don't sound too good in our day and time in our society. That sounds like some kind of oppression. Folks, that's freedom in God. There is a freedom in God for recognizing that he who has saved you in his great love and accepted you as you are, sinner, loves you too much to leave you that way. On a daily basis, follow me and let me change you. So we have to, when, uh, when Satan comes around, when the enemy comes around and says, hey, 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 here, I got some other stuff for you. Our, our response is, I'm involved in a great work. I got, I got some plans for you, Nehemiah. You come down here. We're gonna, no, no, no. I got a plan. It's God's plan. And I'm sticking to it. Folks, the habits of a disciple, which is, you know, part of discipleship. That's what makes you a disciple when you discipline yourself to do things his way. It is what most people confuse with the issue of salvation sometimes. Folks, you are saved at the, uh, at the point of time that you put your faith in Jesus Christ genuinely. But I got news for you. The day that you did that, you don't look too much different from the day before. And a lot of your habits are still very similar to the day before. But in God's sight, you're, a child, you're his child now. And he's got this plan. This plan is, hey, start walking a different way. Folks, here, let me illustrate 
how it works a little bit. Look, I had plans for my own life. I kind of knew about God, and, 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 and I had I was more focused on me. I remember that. Bam, right here. Ben, it's you. Me, Lord. <laughs> you want me, Lord? Ben, you keep that way, it's going to lead to death. I'm calling you a new way. Right here, he called me that away. So while that day I did this, I wasn't too much farther from where I had been on day one. But on the other hand, it all changed. Did it not? Amen. Now I'm looking this way. And my next step is his way. And it might have involved something that I would consider minor now, but I'm so glad that I committed to cooperating. I committed to cooperating. I realized, oh, this is the part where uh, I add my effort. Not in my salvation, but in my discipleship. Not in having my status changed before God, but in allowing him to transform me now. More and more into the image of that one who's way up there, uh, Jesus Christ. So folks, every day thereafter, step by step, Im imperceivable at times to me, God has been changing me. And you know what? He's still doing it. And that's the great work of God in 2022. Hallelujah. If you have experienced the wonderful gift of salvation by your faith in Jesus Christ and your identification with him, hallelujah. But now realize, now what? What? Every single day thereafter, he's the Lord. And he's got good plans for you, folks. I know our fear is, well, no, 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 this is going to end up being bad. And your concept of God is not good. Amen. Let me close by reading from 2 Peter. And I would that you would play, pay real close attention because it's a couple verses, eight verses. But boy, if you could grab on to these eight verses, it'll help you so much with that daily cross-bearing. 2 Peter. Chapter 1, verse 3. His, talking about God, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Him, talking about God Himself, who called us by His own glory and goodness. Folks, we have available to us everything we need for a godly life. Verse 4 says, through these, through this knowledge of, of him and his own glory and goodness, through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises. So that through them, through the great and precious promises, you may, listen to this, participate in the divine nature. The divine nature of whom? Of God himself. Having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Oh, that's a daily process there. For this very reason, in other words, because this is possible, a godly life is possible. For this very reason, then, make every effort to add. Who's supposed to make the effort? You are. I am. 
You guys, there is a part of Christianity that involves my partnership. It isn't in my salvation. In my salvation, that is an issue of believing in Christ Jesus. All I can add to God's great plan of salvation is simply believe it, receive it, accept it. But in regards to discipleship, oh, now we're talking about effort. My effort. Let's make every effort to add to your faith, because that's where it starts, though. It starts with faith in Christ. Goodness. It's not automatic. To your goodness knowledge. Amen. That's why I keep still reading the Bible. Because there's so much more I need to know. I, I, I keep adding to knowledge. I, to, to knowledge, self-control. I keep responding in obedience to, to the self-control, perseverance. A, a, a continual, daily. Amen. I can still mess this thing up in my life. To perseverance, godliness, to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. So you see how it's a, a process where you're adding and adding and adding. You're making your effort because it's God's will, because he has provided, because it is possible. If, if you possess these qualities, listen to this, you guys, in increasing measure, They will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I like the way that sounds. I don't want to be ineffective. I don't want to be unproductive. I don't want to just pass time on this earth. Whoever does not have then this process of continually building and building and building is nearsighted and blind. Forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. Folks, it is possible for you to come to Christ and be his child and not grow well. And still make heaven your home. Because of his great grace and mercy. I know that bothers us. <laughs> Tough. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, this continual practice, this habit of daily adding, you will never stumble. Whoa. And you'll receive, listen to this, and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Folks, I know that because of my experience of daily walking with him at, to this point in time in my life, I have a greater confidence of heaven being my home. I assure myself, even though ultimately it's how he sees me, not how I see myself even, but there is a confidence, a, a, amen, there is, um, amen, I hope, that, I hope that at some point in your walk with God, something happens, and, and you feel like being yourself, but you arrest yourself. You allow the Holy Spirit to check you. You, you, you tie into God's power enough that you give the Christ-like response not your natural one. <laughs> I, I hope that that's happened to you to the point that you, you realize, oh my God, God's at work in me. Where you yourself are almost surprised at how much he has changed you in this process called discipleship. In the which, this is where you add your effort. This is where you do your part. This is where you build on what you already have as God continues calling you to greater conformity to the image of the firstborn, Jesus Christ. Do you see where this is a great work of God in your life? Can you understand where in 2022 God wants to continue this? 
Amen. Let us stand. Folks, lay hold of all God has for you. Don't live beneath God's best. Re read that portion of scripture in 2 Peter and read it a, a couple times. And realize how much God has for you. And how he has made it possible for you to live a godly life. And believe him and take him at his word. Keep putting your faith in him. Despite all the calls to the opposite. Keep reminding yourself you and God are involved in a great work. And part of that work is your own transformation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And folks, as you committed to him on the first day of your uh, life in Christ, you need to commit daily to whatever it is that you need to carry. Amen? Amen. Precious Lord, I pray, dear God, that everyone here, oh Lord, is clear currently, dear God, about their faith relationship with you. Lord, to the point that while they acknowledge that they still have things that need to be worked on, Lord, they are good with you because of their faith in the work of Jesus Christ, their acceptance, their identification. But dear God, that's just the beginning, Lord, and a rebirth experience necessitates, Lord, a reparenting experience. And God, we acknowledge, Lord, that we're in that process. Lord, as long as we're in the flesh, we're in the process. Lord, a daily process, dear God, where you direct. Lord, where our faith is renewed daily in you. Lord, as we face things and, and uh, have to um, uh, subject ourselves and train ourselves and corral ourselves. Lord, our tongues, our thoughts, our actions, our attitudes. Lord, because of your greater plan for us. Lord, thank you for that beautiful reminder through the Apostle Peter. Lord, that the godly life is possible for us because of our faith in Christ Jesus. But Lord, that we need to keep adding. Lord, we need to co keep cooperating. Lord, we need to um, promote our own growth but grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, Lord, we're all challenged. Lord, all of us have a sense of uh, we ought to be doing better. Lord, I thank you that your Holy Spirit can still remind us of that. Lord, today, dear God, in spite of, again, all the many voices and distractions, uh, Lord, may we commit afresh, Lord, to your great work in us uh, through the work of discipleship. Lord, help us to commune with you more. Help us, Lord, to read your word. Help us, God, to respond in obedience. Help us, Lord, to maintain fellowship and uh, be helped and help others to, to in their growth walk with you. And uh, Lord, help us to serve. Lord, these are the habits of a disciple, Lord, that will keep us adding and adding and adding, Lord, making our election uh, uh, and call sure, Lord, until we reach that uh, great welcome, dear God, in eternity. Savior, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Folks, God bless you in your growing in Christ's likeness in Jesus' name. God bless.